Okay. Hello, welcome uh, DLD 2016. My name is Philip Banzer and my next guest is Nenad Marowatz from DN Capital, your founder and a managing partner. Yep. Uh, you're an investor, obviously. Um, and we talk a little bit about money, uh, investing, VC, Europe, USA. And um, you're based in London, in the US. So I base 40% uh, of my time in London, 40% of my time in Berlin and 20% rest of the world, including US. And what, what firms are you invested in? So uh, I'm, I'm on the board of a company called Shazam, which is a leading mobile application for recognizing yeah. music. music. I'm on the board of Vinland.de here in uh, Munich. Uh, also Auto One in Berlin, Mr. Specs, Movago, home to go uh, Book of Tiger, et cetera. Quite yes. a few companies. Okay, and what is your overall budget you can invest? So we have about uh, $300 million under management. Okay. And we're just about to raise our new fund, about a 200 million euro fund. So we will have about half a billion euros under management. I, I saw you on the panel um, when you were talking about different uh, climate change, more or less for investors in Europe. How is it different from a couple of years ago? Well, I think the big difference I see is the migration to Berlin. So I think if you went back 10 years ago, uh, Berlin was nothing. There was not much there. Uh, in fact, you just had the government just moving there. I think since Rocket has you know, started Rocket in Berlin, Internet, yeah, basically brothers. 2006, 2008, 2010, uh, you start to see the emergence of uh, some very interesting companies. A lot of the people that used to work uh, with Rocket or Team Europe. No one talks about Team Europe anymore, but Team Europe, Lukas Gadowski also uh, started a big ecosystem of entrepreneurs. So he was company building. And so the people like, for instance, if you take Marcus Furman, Marcus Furman's the founder of Delivery Hero, done with Lukash. Now he started uh, Book of Tiger, Dojo Madness, et cetera. You take a look at uh, Philip Magin uh, with City Deal, Groupon. Now he started uh, Quandu, which we invested in, now Movago, now Watchmeister. And so you, you have this ecosystem of serial entrepreneurs on a scale which we don't see anywhere else in Europe, actually. And uh, why is it in Berlin? I think Berlin is just a very interesting city to do a startup. It's cheap, the rent is cheap, it's very easy to get an office. Uh, there's lots of young people, there's like 17 universities, so there's a lot of talent there. I think also uh, there's a shift in the economy. Uh, the people that you know, had the greatest grades in school all used to always want to go to banking, consulting, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. I think there's less interest in doing that today and actually more interest by these really dynamic people to run startups. I, I heard from, from some people in Berlin that now the new Berlin is Warsaw, uh, Budapest, so it's moving to the east already, would you uh, say? No, I don't believe that at all. Oh, okay, why not? Um, I, I've worked in those markets. I think they have very good engineers. I think management is a very big issue in those markets. Uh, I think uh, the management we find here in Germany and the, and the work ethic is very <laughs> similar to US style. Uh, where you know, I see I can go to a board meeting on a Monday night at eight o'clock at one of my companies, and I will come out there at ten, ten thirty, and there's still lots of people there, and you don't see that everywhere in Europe. You see that in Berlin. All right, and uh, and Silicon Valley. On 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 the stage, you were talking about Rocket Internet and its function for the whole economy, for the whole startup business yeah. in Europe. It's a very controversial company yeah. because they are often called a copycat company because they copy uh, 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 businesses that work otherwhere, uh, elsewhere, and they. So there's a, that's that's a religious yeah. sort of view. Yeah. Uh, some people think, oh my God, unless you're creating something new, it's no good. Yeah. I completely think that's bullshit. Uh, I think every country doing business, whether you're, uh, you know, even if you might be doing a similar business, I think uh, it's very different to operate in Germany than it is in the U.S. So even those, maybe you're, you know, getting people coupons to restaurants or you're selling diapers online, uh, et cetera, or getting people um, uh, reservations in a restaurant, I still think it's a very different business model. So, and, and it takes very different execution skills. So. I don't agree with that. Okay, that's for once. But yeah. uh, you talked about the positive effect Rocket Internet oh. has. Yeah, well, the positive effect is Ali is uh, Ali's incredible, right? I mean, Ali, Ali is more successful than any venture capitalist in Europe by a margin of 10. There's no venture capitalist who's created more value than Ali and Alex and Mark. So uh, let's just put that, that's, that's objective. That's not subjective, that's true. So then, um, you know, he's made a lot of money. He's got a lot of capital. He takes a lot of risk. So. A lot, he needs a lot of people to run these businesses. And so 
you know, so the ones are, you know, a lot of the people that say, hey, you know, I'm doing this for Ali, they learn how to do it, and then they go on to create businesses. So for instance, uh, Philip Magine and, and uh, Daniel Glasner, ex-Groupon City Deal guys, started Quandu, now they started other companies. Uh, Hakan Koch and Christian Betterman. Uh, Christian was at Groupon, Hakan was at Home24, now they started Auto One, which is the most uh, valuable private company in Germany today. So we see a lot of very positive things coming from the ex-Rocket you know, sort of academy. I mean, because Rocket, you know, Ali's a hard worker, and people that work there have to work hard. Uh, another another argument uh, that was made on the stage uh, for for this different climate was that uh, we have uh, a second generation of angel investors that have made already some money yeah. and now looking for new investments. Would yeah. you agree that this is an important factor? It's definitely an important factor. Uh, a lot of times when we are making an investment, our first check we're co-investing co-investing with these angel investors. Um, they move quick. You know, they don't spend six weeks or eight weeks doing due diligence. They're backing the person. And early stage investing is all about backing the person. Obviously, you want to see it's a big market and believe that the product is credible, but usually there's no business. So you're backing the person. And so that's where I think these guys are very useful. And in terms of technologies, what kind of technologies are going well today and which technologies are a little bit disappointing in your, in, in your perspective? Well, if you take Europe as a market, it's very different in each country. And uh, you know, you take Sweden. Sweden is a very small market. They're obviously doing mostly tech plays. So I would, and platform plays like Spotify, which revolution, revolutioning music, Klarna, the payment space. You know, Sweden as a market for marketplace or e-commerce is not interesting, it's too small a market. So we see a lot of tech coming out of Sweden, also UK. Germany, we've seen a lot of marketplaces, a lot of e-commerce. Uh, starting to see some mobile apps, uh, obviously. Fintech. Uh, fintech as well. So I think the original businesses were very much, you know, sort of copying what they learned at Rocket, and now these entrepreneurs are actually doing different things and becoming more creative. And do you think fintech is pretty promising still? Yes, absolutely. Uh, you know, the banks uh, have Too become slow. very, very yeah. conservative mm -hmm. uh, since 2008. Uh, lending has been uh, you know, very difficult, so a lot of companies like Lending Circle, et cetera, are coming up to really fill the gap where the banks are not making, uh, you know, making those investments or those loans anymore. And in the US, we have seen in the last couple of years a lot of uh, VC money going into media companies, Vox Media, for example. Uh, do you see this in, 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 in Germany, Europe uh, happening as well, that VC go goes into um, yeah, businesses that a couple of years ago didn't promise very much revenue or, or, or margin? Yeah, yeah, you're starting to see now already. Um, there's a new TV platform being designed right now in Germany. TPG has put like 60 million euros up front as a seed investment into the company. Uh, so we start to see a lot of things like this as well. All right, uh, thanks you very much for, for your time. You're welcome, cheers. Okay, Bye. thank you very much. Evan Marowatz uh, from DN Capital. My name is Philip Banzer for DCTP.TV from the DLD 2016. Thank you very much for watching. See you soon, bye.